afternoon, Sunday afternoon, and just doing a little bit of planting up of a few things which are going to get growing, and just also unpacked my, my seed order. So just here in front of me, we're going to do some pea shoots, which is the first time I've ever done that. So I've just done a, a little bit of check up on YouTube to see what people recommend. So um, my peas are soaking in here. So these are just, they are seed peas. They did say you could just use dried peas, but because of the seed manufacturer we use, this is the bag of seed peas. Well, this is one of two bags of seed peas we just bought. So this is a Meteor variety. Uh, and there's Deuce Province in there, so I might try a bit of both of them and I'm going to try them with them in water and with them without and just see what the difference is. You know, I've got plenty of seeds, so I'm going to do a tray of, of them up to start with and I'm also going to do uh, cells which I can then plant. So what is suggested is in the cells you, you put uh, three seeds into each one of the things uh, and let them come and then you can plant them out and that'll give you about a six weeks crop. So that's quite interesting. As I say, it's not really something I've ever done. In regards to everything else that we've got, um, we've got a couple of different bits and pieces coming out. A lot of them um, I've gone for like the, uh, let me find it here, um, the winter hardy uh, lettuces. So I'm going to be sowing some winter hardy lettuce. I've uh, got a couple of little gems which I'm going to just try and sow anywhere, see if they come up. Um, beetroots, uh, now they might be a bit early to, or a bit late even to plant them. So I'm going to just do a bit more research on them. If not, I might plant them for shoots um, and just see how that goes. Uh, and then I've got a couple of packets of radish. Now, I did have a winter hardy radish somewhere. Um, I've lost the packet now. Um, or was it winter hardy? Oh no, winter hardy spring onion. That was it. So winter hardy spring onion, that's what I'm going to do. So packet full of spring onion seeds, absolutely amazing. Uh, we haven't had great luck with the spring onions so far, which is a bit funny because I've never struggled with them before. So I'm going to get them, them in and see how they do and see if they can winter over a bit. Because obviously we're trying to produce veggies all year round. Now, I hear you say this is not pumpkins. This is something which we are doing alongside the pumpkins because we need to kind of give us some space for the rotation. Um, so if you don't know what the rotation is, basically if you grow the same crop on the same piece of land repeatedly, you'll starve it of all the nutrients. Now, we're using compost here, uh, which is actually bought compost. I do have my own compost. It's a bit chunky for doing seeds into. So that gets used down on the farm, uh, on the fields. Um, but, like I say, if you don't change the crop, you, you end up running out of nutrients. Now, fair enough, you can pummel the land full of absolute everything that it possibly needs. You know, you can spray everything onto a plant through a foliar ac application, which will allow it to grow, but that is not how we're doing it. We're trying to do it with as minimum disturbance of the environment as we can. Um, which also kind of ties into, I've just been doing quite a bit of research on going semi no dig so the principle behind no dig gardening is you don't actually disturb the surface of the soil other than to, to, to harvest so obviously the likes of carrots or something like that you, you do have to use a fork to just kind of like tease them out but you actually just keep putting compost on top and it stops the whole thing of weed seeds because you put compost on top of the current weed seeds now they won't grow because they're too deep now if you if you were digging over you know you've seen what issue we've had with the weeds down there if you're digging over you turn the soil over you bring the weed seeds to the surface they can then germinate and they germinate at the same speed as any of these seeds would and, and just basically take over which is the issue we've had in a few places so there is some things which I'm still going to do digging wise um, probably the planting of the pumpkins because to actually plant them no dig style would be really hard with the amount we're planting but I'm not ruling out not doing it in the future you know that's something which is definitely we can see how it works the likes of the the carrots and stuff which should work absolutely fine with a with a no dig style and the root will actually kind of dig itself uh, as it goes and um, so yeah all sorts of bits and pieces coming up we're trying to get as, as good as we can with what we do obviously we don't use pesticides we're not using herbicides uh, on, on the field uh, that, and just using what's called companion planting which is where we're going to try and kind of develop a bit further to have certain plants which attract um, insects which will eat our pests it's like the thing of if you plant 
uh, something which is more attractive to a pest than the plant you're actually trying to grow, you, a pest will go eat that plant. So you can really help yourself out. Um, so we, we, we're learning. It's, it's definitely an uphill course. Lots of research um, going on. And we'll just see where it goes from there. So I'm going to get on. I'm going to get these in. Literally, what it says is... You know, I tell you what, I'm going to move these small packets of seeds into that box. I'm just changing my filing system around a bit. Um, because the box that I was using is, is not very good anymore. It's um, this, it's just kind of getting a little bit disorganised, let me show you. So, there's all sorts in there. That's a bag of wildflower seeds and then you're into the Brussels sprouts and there's all sorts. So what I need is it segmented. So I've, I've stolen uh, a box off my children. Um, uh, respect the water, I don't lie. Always respect the water. Uh, yeah, so that's going to happen. So what it said was... Well, you just basically spread these on quite thick. It's not really thick. I'm going to need more trays. I'll definitely put more peas into this thing than I need. But I don't know how many pea shoots people use. You know, is it something you've you've used? Let me know. Um, I think I've only ever seen it on like the postage the restaurants. And what it said is to put like three seeds into each one of these. So one, two, three, one two three and you get the idea you don't need to see me do that with them all then all i'm going to do from that i'll show you on this one is let me just angle it around a bit sprinkle a bit of compost over the top you can said not too much so they only need to be shallow now these are going to come up like the ones which have come up down at the, the field which you've seen when i've shown you where they are um and if those ones come up all right we'll get them planted down the field now what this could mean is i could plant quite a lot have some for pea seeds um, for sorry for pea shoots and plant some to then develop a pea crop as well so there we go that's done and all you now need to do is keep that damp so i'll give that a, a little firm down just to make sure soil seed contact and then that once the label's in it properly is going to get um, watered and sorted. So I've got quite a lot of peas, so I might make a few more trays. See you in a bit. An educational video outside. This is what I've resorted to. Ah, see, it doesn't even work to try and keep the wind off the back of the camera. So it sounds all right. Oh, this is absolute nightmare. And this is all because I cannot get the microphone to work. If the microphone works, that wouldn't be an issue. Now the microphone works with my son's old phone. Will it work with my Pro iPhone 12 Pro? No. Will it heck? So <sighs> can't get there. But we'll give this a go. See if that's got wind noise. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Morning? No, it's not morning. It's afternoon. I don't know why I said morning, but it is afternoon. I'm out with the tractor, the mower, up on the very top of a hill. Well, not quite on the top, because that bit's higher than me. So that is Snaefell, that is our highest and only mountain on the island. Um, Sulby Reservoir, which is as big as reservoir, is just down in below that hill there. So I'm just out topping this rough grass off. Now, I've just cobbed out because I think I'm a little bit low. So I'm cutting, uh, well, let's go over here and you can see. So there's lots of weeds in here. There's also lots of grass. So I'm not trying to cut too much of the grass. As you can see in, oh, hang on, let me just move my hand. And this bit, so the reeds are getting cut off, but it's also cutting the grass. So I'm just gonna lift it up slightly, which we have, well, there's some spaces on it, but these spaces have come off a corn drill, which we've got down at the farm, because we couldn't find any more for it. So they do fit, they're, they're designed for a bit of a smaller shaft than what this is. But these go on to this ram here and then just click on like that which limits how far this ram can go that way which then adjusts how low it goes so um what have i got um tell you what i'll put them both on and that's going to take about an inch and a half off the ram so we'll see how that goes but welcome to the isle of man spectacular and i've left my beacon on flashy flashy really slow flashy flashy but need to turn it off so these sheep, if you can see them in the distance, are Herdwicks. Um, natives to the Lake District. Uh, lovely, really coarse wool. Not very good for clothing, but great for rugs and stuff like that. But 
moody skies and it is raining and I've still got no window yet because it's not being repaired. So I am getting wet legs. There we go, there's the, there's the frame for where the window should be. So I'm getting a bit wet in the rain uh, and uh, I've got the heating on as well. So we'll keep up and let you know how that gets on. We'll go from there, just a small mower. Now, this is probably extremely loud, but I thought it was really tight for me to get up here with the mower on. Uh, but there's just an Arctic truck heading out with a digger on it, uh, which is just crazy. So maybe I underestimated how much room there was in the uh, on the road on the way up here. But going well, uh, just slowly making my way around the field. Where the reeds are, I've got to really slow down, so I'm down to gear five, which is very slow. And now sped back up to gear eight, where it's just grass. So doing really well. Uh, gonna have to head off down in not too long. I was only supposed to do a couple of laps around the outside, but I've done uh, seven or eight, nine laps now. So I'm probably about halfway through the field because I'm just working around the outside in big circles, just getting in closer and closer to the middle. Uh, I might start going back and forwards. I don't know. It's just easier at the moment going around in circles. So uh, it, the sheep seem to be getting into the ever decreasing patch of long grass in the middle. Uh, but they'll soon like the, uh, the the cut grass will kick up some nice fresh shoots and they'll love that. So, uh, but yeah, just getting all the weeds topped off. So, see you in a bit. I'm gonna go back to listen to music. Wish I had a door. Hey dude, just on the way back down from the, uh, doing the moat, I seem to be covered in grease. Um, look at that, spectacular, in the mist. So I just wanted to show the uh, heather here. So all the heather up on the hills is now starting to be in flower. And uh, you can't really see it now because obviously it's a bit murky. But um, before when I was looking, the hill on the opposite side was just purple. And it is absolutely spectacular. You might be able to see that side a bit better. Um, five minutes since it was absolutely clear, lovely um, blue skies above us and uh, now you can't see much. So I'm just heading back home. I've got about half the field done, uh, thereabouts. Uh, so leaving the mower up there, as you can see, no mower on the back. And uh, just gonna head back down this uh, lovely little narrow track and hope that I don't meet anything. And like I say, I don't know how that um, uh, Arctic with the digger on has done it, but that's impressive. So yeah, we'll uh, hopefully be back down on lower ground tomorrow and uh, might be a bit warmer. This is the middle of summer. What are we on? 14th of August. Still in the shorts, but it ain't the warmest. Let's put it that way. See you later. Okay, it's just out of topping. And uh, I got to there, and there's beehives on the other side, and I've just got absolutely attacked by bees. I've just got stung on the back of the neck, and just in next to the eye. So uh, I'm just trying to work out how I'm going to go get the tractor back. Um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, a chance going a bit closer, but bloody hell that hurt. So we can just shut the PTO off and get out of there pretty quick. I'm guessing they don't like the vibration of it. You know, that's that's what my thought is. So. But I can't see any around it. We'll give it a go. Oh, I hurt. Good evening. You don't get much different weather to that compared to where I just had the tractor. Now, really interestingly, the field that I was mowing is that one across there. So this is now looking from the other side. With the two masts up there being the top of snare fell. So as I say, that is our only mountain. Um, so that's the highest point. There is two masts on it and there is a tram up to it, which you can maybe just see the pantographs of the electric. So there is a tram up there, but yeah. So the field that I was just mowing is across there. That's the Solby Reservoir in there. Um, and yeah, so just a, a different view, but like I say, an island of uh, totally different weathers. So I couldn't resist that coming down. And if you can see it, that bit of land there is Scotland. Um, so that's over the other side of the sea. We can see that and uh, over that way is Ireland, but you can't see that from here. So yeah, 
it's a lovely evening now absolutely fantastic compared to what it was like earlier um you can't really see what i was mowing because it's not standing out too much um but i can see it because i know that i've done it um so yeah we might be back up there tomorrow we might not uh i did carry on and as you saw um i've not swelled up too much from my, my bee stings um but i don't know what was going on there they're they're never normally like that aren't bees but um they definitely weren't happy with me doing the uh, the mowing around there. So I got about a third of the field done and then just bailed because I wasn't going down that end of the field again. And so I might give that a try tomorrow again and see where we're at. And there is another field to do there. And uh, yeah, but absolutely spectacular up here. Look at that. That's Benny Pop. And I don't know their names. Really bad. Should do. But yeah. See you later. Driving backs and forwards, I thought I might as well explain uh, how things work in here. I was just looking down, and obviously, I'm not touching any of the pedals. Excuse the few pieces of glass and the ratchet strap. The ratchet strap is for securing that together. Um, when we're on the road, we, we ratchet strap it together. Now, that will be staying up here. A few bits of glass are still from the door, which is missing. Um, the, the bits which come out of the frame whenever I shut it. So, I'm not using any of the foot pedals, I'm not using the hand throttle, what I have used is the preset here. So you'll see on the dashboard, just there, the PTO is running at 980 RPM. So this mower is 1000 RPM, supply, but we don't actually need to run it at 1000, although we're not far off there. The other day I was running it at about 700, 800. Uh, and it was doing a good job there. I've been cutting some reeds up here which are a bit tougher, so we've, I've upped it a bit to run out of that. So, at which point, I'm sat in gear eight at the moment, uh, which is absolutely perfectly fine. I could probably go a bit quicker, but I'd have to change up into the next box. So if I hit anything which is tough, I'm not gonna be able to, to back off enough. 
The mower is all the way down at the moment until it stops, which I showed you before, I think. Uh, and obviously it's not folded up. So, all I've got to do is line up the outer of them bolts on the top of the mug guard with the edge of the cut grass. I'll show you in a minute. So obviously when you're doing a turn, you turn away first, which just gives you a bit more room, because it's just, if you turned straight away into your turn, you'd really struggle to get back onto it. So if I bring you to this side, I'll try and line you up with my head. So what I do is I line up the outer bolt on the mudguard with the edge of the cut grass. And now if I take you up and you can have a look at the mirror, you can just about see, I've got a little bit of overlap, overlap on that, but not got a bit too far there, but not an awful lot, so that just makes sure that I don't have to go back and, and do any little bits, but uh, yeah, so I just thought you might be interested. I pulled over at the same place here, in the mist, with the tractor, now today, that's the view, so that is Scotland, across the Irish Sea. lovely still day and I seem to have had like the most productive day ever just got a load of topping done so I was topping at a job with the um, with the little the old track I'm just gonna see if I can sneak up on a hair I'll just see um, uh, yep yeah, sorry what was I saying where was I yes so this morning I was doing a topping job with the uh, the Massey, my, my Massey, the, the 35, the old one. Uh, managed to get all that sorted. That was the one which I was uh, fighting with the bees over the, uh, the other day, which was not too pleasant. But the advantage of suffering from, <laughs> I'm, I'm never gonna catch up with this hair, I can just keep seeing it jumping. Oh, there's two of them. There must be a few of them in here. Um, just keep seeing them jumping over pumpkins. Um, the uh, advantages of having really bad hair fever is I'm constantly taking, oh, it's just in there. I can see it's ears. definitely not going to catch up with it now um yes so the advantage of having hair fever is i constantly take antihistamines uh which then meant when i got stung i didn't swell up uh, i only had a little bit of swelling from it but bloody hell did it hurt so right um update on where we're at after that i then went mowing up on the top again got the field finished now that is a big field but it's a big mower um so that was really good to get that done um i've just changed the brakes on my wife's car and I've just fitted a door latch and a, a panel so I seem to have done everything ridiculously well oh and I fixed the mower which broke the other day ready for tomorrow so hopefully that doesn't break again tomorrow and it's only 20 past 8 so um, I'm doing fairly well they but the pumpkins are doing even better check these ones out hang on let me just try and not stand on it look at that they so these are the ones we grew on and then planted actual plants. Um, as, well, look at that one, that big white one there. Let's go have a closer look. Um, so these were all planted as plants rather than as seeds. So it's really interesting to see how these have done. Oh, that's, that's an ugly one, isn't it? Look at that. So I think this is one of the polar bears bit of all sorts going on in here now which is really interesting because there was no pumpkins in here when down there had pumpkins already um, so it's obviously just delayed but they're soon catching up you know they are really really rocketing on are those now um, right let's see what else I can find shall I go see if I can find one of the big ones I vaguely remember where one of them is I really should move in fact I'm going to do that because I forgot to keep taking photos of this one. So 
the plan of this steak was I was taking photos of that plant every day to see it growing. Well, I've kind of forgot to do it for like the past four weeks. Um, so I've got the photos of it starting to grow, but not of it finishing to grow. So, um, right, let's go find a big pumpkin. It's like we're going on a bear hunt. So what we got here? Oh, they're all big, they're all absolute whoppers. There's a big in there. That's not that big though. Oh, we've got orange ones. Look. Two orange ones. And a couple of big ones around the corner. There's an orange one there. Right. Where does it see them big ones? Not there. So that's a fairly big one. But I don't think that's the biggest one. Right. Onward. There, there is some really big pumpkins in here now. Um, right, what I'm going to do is stop recording because you don't need to see me hunting for pumpkins. Oh, as exciting as it is, because look, they look like this. Look at that. It's absolutely massive. So I'm going to go have a hunt, see if I can find a big pumpkin. And I'll catch up with you later. I've just put the steak in on that one. Look at that. That's huge. But then I've just spotted this one. Oh no, that's not as big. That's a little bit smaller. But it's got a twin right next to it. So I think we're going to have a fair few large pumpkins. Now, really interesting. These ones are already going orange. So... Need to find out whether they're ready to harvest. Ooh, what's going on here? This plant seems to have got mildew on it. So, I'm gonna keep an eye on them because I might need to separate them ones off because that one seems to have not look too healthy. Um, yeah, pumpkins everywhere. So, I should catch up with you tomorrow. So just to add to the linkages, after I thought I'd had a productive day, yes, breakages even, uh, my PTO shaft has just fallen out at the back of the tractor, dumping all its oil. So uh, that's all going to be a bit fun, but uh, I'm going to have to work out how to sort that now. Good evening, Wednesday evening now, and uh, as the tractor sat there feeling very sorry for itself, um, I'm just down having a look at these new peas that we put in. So this is his next crop of peas. I'll just let the dog get out of the way. So, um, there you go, you can see one. So they're, they're, they're all the way down there, and that way, down to them orange markers down at the bottom. Now, really interestingly, this is the area we had turnips and pumpkins-ish. Pumpkins were just on the edge of here last year sorry there's a fly on my elbow um so this section i left the turnips for quite a long time i don't know if you remember but um we some of them must have gone to seed because you see this lovely green carpet underneath me that's mostly turnips well swedes it's not a turnip so i'm just gonna see if i can pull one up without the dog doing a runner because if she runs off, that'll be in pain in the neck. So let's just tell you what. Whoa, sorry, hand in the front. So let's pull one up like that. So there you go. That, yeah, you can smell it, is a little Swede. At which point, they're not going to be very big for... Hang on, I just need to swap my hands. God, this is awkward. Um... Not going to be very big for hop chenay, but we are definitely going to have some Swedes over winter, which is lovely. The only trouble is they're all around the peas, apart from them lot, which are up past the peas. Um, so I was trying to top off everything here, the weeds off to my to my left there, that, that way, um, uh, so I could see at least what was there. Now, unfortunately, as I've already said, the um, PTO shaft decided to part company with the um, rest of the tractor so it now 
doesn't have a PTO shaft. Well, it does. It's sat in there, but the unfortunate thing is, in the process of it parting company, it's drained all the oil out of the back. And the real unfortunate thing is, it's drained all the oil out of the back. There. Right in the middle of the field. Um, so I've tried my best to put a rag in, but there's definitely going to be some contamination from that, which is a shame. Real shame, I'll have to dig out a bit of soil um, once I've worked out what I'm going to do. So I've managed to disconnect the topper from it. Oh, maple. Come on, this way. She's got grease on the lead. Oops. Um, managed to disconnect the topper from it. Um, so that is separate. Um, so I'll, I'll work on getting the tractor towed out at some point, um, which I think it should do all right. I have been looking at my potatoes and I think they now need to be um, heading out of the ground um, if I can uh, if I can get it sorted. The top growth's definitely dying back on them, um, which is brilliant. They've done absolutely fantastic. And I've got an order for um, quite a few carrots and parsnips and stuff to go out this weekend um so we're giving a go someone is wanting to make some hummus from some parsnips so that's going to be really interesting to see how that goes for them so uh i'll be harvesting them probably tomorrow or friday i think um and then get them sorted um but yeah so a bit of a shame about the end of today with that and this morning they had issues with the mower again um having thought i'd sorted it yesterday so yesterday was a really productive day today was not but that's the way it goes you know if every day was the same you'd get bored you know if everything went right every day so um you know we've man ah, thistle uh managed to get this bit topped and around there topped which is somewhere i wanted to get done i did want to do the track down the middle between the two areas um but uh it broke before i could get down there so still loads of sunflowers sunflowers are looking absolutely spectacular you know the um the, the main thing with them is just how they look it's not where they're selling or how much they're selling or anything it is they just look brilliant so yeah i'll um possibly catch up with you later in the week um but for now i'm going to have a wander around here and then head off home so take care hey everyone it's friday evening now and it has been a bit of a funny week particularly with the weather we've had sun we've had mist we've had fantastic views it's now absolutely binning it down i was hoping to do the end of the video down at the field whilst harvesting the veggies but i had to harvest them so fast to uh, get it done before this came in because I didn't want to be harvesting in the rain. I didn't get to do it, so out in the garden. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching everything this week. Keep up to date with us, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Um, any questions, bang them in the comments, you know, like, subscribe and all that lot. So no, thank you so much. And uh, next week, um, it's gonna be a shorter video next week because I'm disappearing off for the weekend. Um, so we'll um, see you next week. Take care.